Welcome to the Devin Nunes Podcast. Breaking through the political noise, separating fact from fiction. From the San Joaquin Valley, the breadbasket of the solar system. Here is your host, Devin Nunes. Welcome back to the Devin Nunes Podcast. It is my pleasure to have back on Larry Lindsay, who is an economist, worked in the Bush administration, has been an advisor to the United States Congress, testified before the Congress many, many times, and I've worked with them over the years on tax reform and many other many other issues. Larry runs the Lindsay Group, which he does consulting for many folks in, in the United States and around the globe. Larry, welcome back to the show. It's great to be back, uh, Devin. Well, Larry, there's been a, a lot that's happened here in the last 90 days. We went from Uh, probably the best economy in your lifetime and my lifetime with record low unemployment across the board. And then the virus hit, the coronavirus hit, and we locked everything down. Congress has pumped in over $3 trillion to try to keep the economy pumped up and the liquidity in the marketplace. And I thought it would be a good time this week to just take all of our listeners uh, back and let's give them a snapshot of where we were, why Congress put the liquidity in the market, why it was necessary. And then we'll talk a little bit about how we're going to come out and what to expect over the coming months. But Larry, let's start with what was going through your mind at the time that you knew liquidity had to be put into the marketplace? And maybe we should define you know, what is liquidity so that people understand that. Sure. Well, uh, two things drive the economy. And I'm sure your listeners have heard the phrases demand and supply before. And that's really what drives the economy. And demand is the ability of people to spend and also companies to spend. And supply is uh, how easily companies can supply the goods. So there were two problems from the virus. The first one was the virus suddenly made it more expensive uh, to do just about everything. And the lockdown made it impossible to get goods to market. So we had a bad effect on the supply side. And of course, people had were going to be laid off. And that cuts people's income, cuts their ability to spend. And so we had a bad effect on the demand side. And that's a really bad combination. Because of the lockdown, there wasn't much we could do right away on the supply side. But there was something we could do on the demand side and that is give people and businesses some money to spend, sometimes known as liquidity. So the unemployment benefits were ramped up very substantially, and individuals were sent uh, $1,200 checks. And that was a very substantial injection of money into people's wallets, and that was something that needed to happen. And with all that, Larry, where are we at in gross domestic products? So the, the economy shrink by how much? Where do we stand today? I know some of these numbers lag a little bit, but what do we know for sure the drop in the economy was, and then where do we expect it to go as we look at the second quarter when we get the official numbers that will end at the end of June? So I got some good news and some bad news. Uh, The good news, which we got last Friday, was for the month of April. And in spite of all the layoffs and everything else, we sent enough money to households that their incomes grew very substantially. They grew at about a 10% uh, annual rate, which is a lot. The bad news is that the businesses weren't open because of the lockdown. And as a result, people had no place to go spend the money. So uh, April was a terrible month as far as the economy goes because there wasn't a lot of money spent. The beginning of May looks like it was pretty bad, but the end of May looked pretty good. And there's one more piece of good news, because in April, people saw their incomes go up in aggregate uh, and had no money to spend it on. They were able to save a whole lot. In fact, what we call the savings rate, which is the difference in how much is coming in and how much is going out, was 33 percent. This is an amazing number. And that means that in total, Americans have about $460 $460 billion more in their bank accounts than they would have under normal circumstances. 
And so that's money that's available to be spent as more and more stores reopen and as uh, the economy recovers and as confidence returns. And that's going to help us very much in the expansion that lies ahead. So what do you think the overall drop in GDP will be? What are you estimating right now for the, for the second quarter? So for the second quarter, I expect GDP will be about 14% below where it was in the second quarter of 2019. And the number is going to be reported at uh, something we call compound rate. You basically have to multiply, in simple terms, the 14% by 4. So we're going to get a terrible number at an annual rate, one that doesn't make any sense. But basically, the economy is going to end up about 14% below where it should be. Okay. And as things open up, uh, you know, hopefully June, we're just, you know, here at the start of June, I know a lot of red states are fully opening up. We've figured out ways to treat the coronavirus. We still know that it's what we knew from the very beginning is that it's highly contagious, but we're learning new ways to treat it, whether it's through treating it using blood plasma or some of the different drugs and those capabilities out there. But we know that it's unlikely that hospitals will ever be uh, overrun like we thought was possible three months ago. But with that said, Larry, I guess a lot of this depends on in June is how quick everything opens back up and the riots have to stop and all of that. All those businesses are going to not only have to rebuild, but also open back up. So June could be a little better than we think, could be a little worse. But let's just assume that by July 1st, a lot is open and going, including things like Major League Baseball, NFL football begins to preseason in August. What do you foresee happening in July, August, September? What should we be looking at? Well, July marks the beginning of the third quarter. And I think we will get about a third of our, uh, maybe a little more, of the second quarter decline back in the third quarter and another third in the fourth quarter. And sometime roughly in the middle of next year, we should be back to where we started. So it's It's going to take about a year or so to get out of the hole uh, that we're in, but we will clearly be recovering, and people will know that we're going to be recovering. It'll feel like it. So the big question, Larry, and kind of the final uh, issue this week that I think a lot of people are worried about is the high unemployment rate. How do you kind of roll out, like for those people that are maybe worried about losing their job or haven't been back to work or have, have lost their job? How soon can these jobs come back so that we can get this unemployment rate back down to a a reasonable level? Well, the unemployment rate for May that came out this morning showed just how high unemployment is. It's at a uh, post-World War II high, and that's a scary number. But we have to remember that that number reflects the situation basically three weeks ago uh, in the middle of May. And we know that the reopening started the very next week. And uh, the very next week, we know that unemployment went down. So I think the process of um, having that terrible May number go down is, is already happening. And we should be down to um, about uh, 11 or 12 percent by the end of this year, uh, which is you know almost cutting the number in mm-hmm. half. And that process is going to continue through the middle of next year. Well, it's going to be a long road to recovery. But the good news is I think we came into this with a strong economy. We were able to infuse the liquidity that we talked about earlier uh, on the show here, Larry. So what else do we have left here that we should be watching for for the rest of the year? Well, I think the, the good news, everyone's talking about a second wave. Well, the way viruses work is that they're probably... There usually is a second wave, and there will be a second wave whether we stay or keep ourselves locked down in our houses or not. But this time, I think we know more than we knew last time. We know uh, what to watch for. We know that we don't want to shut the country down at the first drop of a hat. We may localize the intensive care units, uh, begin to get overwhelmed. We may put restrictions back on those localities. But if our leaders have learned anything, it is not to shut the economy down. 
And I think that is the, um, uh, the good news. And hopefully, leaders in some of the, uh, well, they're, they're generally blue states, who have still kept restrictions on way past the time they're needed, you know, they are putting a drag on the economy. And hopefully they will wake up as well and realize that their states need an economy to function, you know, just to keep the tax revenue growing, to give people something better to do. And it's going to depend a lot on how they respond. Well said, Larry. Thank you so much for your advice over the years and for, once again, briefing and updating uh, our listeners to what's happening. My pleasure. Anytime, Devin. This is Devin Nunes. Thank you for listening. We'll catch you next week. Thanks for listening to the Devin Nunes Podcast. We invite you to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. And remember, you can download this podcast on iTunes or at DevinNunes.com. Storm clouds been gathering so long, I don't know. The darkness around us leaves no easy road. We started wondering if every road dead ends our dreams. It whips the dust up and rains pouring down. Good people struggling in every hometown. We started wondering if we even matter at all. Trial by fire like this It's not the hard work your family can fix We've got the power to save it all here in our hands We'll take that hard road to happier days Cause we kept our American faith We're already half the way there We'll take that hard road to happier days Cause we kept our American faith Paid for by Devin Nunes Campaign Committee.